Hi and uh, welcome to our tutorial for today. Uh, today I want to do a um, simple simulation in NX. So let's see the overall procedure first. As you may be familiar with other uh, softwares, it's almost the same procedure uh, in most commercially available softwares. So we start with CAD model, which we already did. We did some modeling in the modeling application. Then we will make associative uh, copy. This part is somehow specific to NX, and I will explain how useful it is. Then we're going to have an idealized geometry, which is not necessary. You may go with your complicated geometry, whatever it is. Then we do a finite element model, and then we run the simulation. But let's first start with the CAD model. I want to uh, focus more from the simulation point of view. Your model might not be always available inside NX. So sometimes you have your model being imported from another software. For example, so you still want to be able to uh, edit your model. For example, here uh, I have a STP file from another software. I can import it here in NX and then use this uh, synchronous modeling, which is kind of unique uh, to NX. And even though the part is not made in NX. See, you don't have any history here in the model history. We can still add or remove features here by using this synchronous uh, model. For example, instead of extruding, I can use move and then uh, move faces like this. I can. Uh, Let's see, for example, I have some values here to change the faces. Or, for example, you, you can delete holes or other features that you don't need, like this. The replace is not uh, useful here. If you have blend edges, you can resize them, even if they are not. Uh, model than NX, or you can resize holes, for example. You see, NX automatically detects the size of the hole, and then you can change it like this. And make any changes that you want before you take your model to uh, the uh, simulation. And the NX will save it as a PRT file. Now let's go back uh, to the uh, simulation. Now the next steps are like NX is going to make a copy of your part and then you can make changes into that part without changing the main model or master model. This has a lot of benefits. Let's open, for example, one of the models with it before. move on to uh, the uh, modeling application first. Today, I just want to do some simulation on this part for a start. So I'm going to open that in a new window. So I want to do simulation on this part. And uh, you move to the application and click on pre-post. Now, this has a weird name. It used to be advanced simulation, but I don't know how they came up with this name. And there is also design that you can do. They are basically the same thing, but as it says, it's specifically tailored for design engineering, performing initial design and validation studies. So this design is basically pre-post, but missing some features. So 
So it's basically useless if you have pre-post. You can just start pre-post. So I click on pre-post and we get a new tab like this and now we are in the pre-post or advanced simulation application. We have a chance to do some idealization. For example, I want to remove this logo without changing the main part. Remember, the main part the, or the master part, you want to keep it as it is, so you can use it in other applications, like in modeling. Let's say I'm going to 3D print this part, and I want to have the logo on it. But in the simulation, I don't want to have this. And I don't want to go back, turn off the extrude feature from history and come back here and turn it on again. So here I have the option to make some changes. For example, I can use this uh, delete for, uh, face. But before that, let me just make a new simulation and show you how it will do uh, the changes in the body. Now I could just do the synchronous uh, modeling and remove it. But this, when I click new simulation, it will offer me to create an idealized part. What it does is that it will just make a new PRT file with this I at the end of the file name, which means idealized. So it will keep my main or master PRT safe while I'm making changes uh, to the simulation part. So I check create idealized part I want to use all the bodies here. We could load the whole assembly here and do a simulation on the whole assembly. I click OK and it will start to make this simulation tree, which I'm going to explain. Here is asking you to, to make a new solution. This is just like motion study. You can have multiple solutions with different loadings, different constraints and stuff different meshing. The first solution I have, I want to use my NX design simulation. This sim center has some problem, I guess, with uh, license. So I will go with NX design simulation. I want to do a structural analysis and a linear static type. And I create the solution. Here it will ask uh, more options, most option default options are okay so i click okay now you see the full tree of simulation at the top of the tree you see a sim file let me first save so when i click on save it will create the files actually at the top of the simulation you see this dot sim file which includes all your simulation including solution and the dot fem then you have a dot fem in the directory that includes your idealized part, which includes your part file. So this is like assembly. Now your part is part of an assembly which called idealized uh, PRT file. So changes that I make on the top of the assembly won't change my main part and only affects the simulation. Now after that, the software actually doesn't see your part as you see it like this. It will see it in a polygon shape, like the STL files that you make. Uh, it is made of polygons. This is the same thing. Under the this clean and clear PRT file, the software will see a polygon shape geometry, which is made uh, in the software, but it's not rendered here. You can actually see that it looks something like, let me see if I can bring it up from visualization. Here you can see, I can, I, I can check that here. This is what it actually looks like to the software. The part, this is not a mesh, but the PRT file itself looks like this to the software. Now let's go back. So at the end, uh, the polygon is what the software will see. 
And that's why when I make changes, it has to be updated on the polygon. So the software see the change. So let's move on. First, I need to assign a material, but uh, here I still don't have a mesh. So let's first make the mesh. Uh, we'll start with tetrahedral mesh. But as I said, we want to remove this logo. I just forgot to make those changes. So I double click on this idealized part. You get a warning. And it says if you want to make changes, first you need to promote or wavelength the geometry. This wants to make a copy on the top of this copied file. So this is associative copy that we are making. And there are two ways to do this, as I explained here. You can promote the body or make a wavelength. Both are doing the same thing. They are actually making a copy of your file, so the main file is safe. Even though we have two copies here, but this is like a uh, assembly. So you don't want to make changes directly in the assembly and uh, ruin your design. That's why you need to promote or wavelength it. If I wavelength it, it actually makes a real copy that will appear into the history here into the uh, part navigator and you have to hide uh, the main part while you are working on the copied part the promote on the other hand doesn't it still makes a copy but it won't show it here in the part navigator so i go with the promote because it's more simple to use i promote this body so my main master file is going to be safe and now I can start making changes. Here you see the idealized part is selected by making a promote body. I promoted this PRT file up to the top of the assembly. I mean a co copy of PRT file to the top of the uh, assembly, which is idealized. Now I can make changes without being reflected on the main part. To remove this, I'm going to use synchronous uh, modeling. So I need to select all the faces of the logo. Let's remove the preview so it won't pop up every time. Let me, let me see if I can select all the faces. Yes. And here you see the preview and the result is like this. I click OK. The logo is gone. Let me hide the datums and sketches and curves. Yes. Now you see that logo is removed, but it still exists in the PRT file. So if I go back and I want to 3D print this part, I see the logo and I can 3D print it. This is good when you want to have the part for different types of manufacturing, like casting or 3D printing or machining. Those parts are different from simulation. If I had some screw holes, weld beads, or stuff like that, details like uh, fillets, for example, the chamfers, that I don't necessarily need them into simulation. I can remove them here now on this part of the simulation. Now the idealized part is ready. I can save, and here on uh, simulation file view, I can double click on sim file to go back now you see this update pending so needs to be updated before this logo is gone now i can go back to meshing you see when i just switch to meshing it will automatically update the uh, the whole tree for me so it is already updated now here on the polygon, I can see this polygon is uh, ready for simulation. Now I can start meshing uh, the part file. But before you start the simulation, remember that you have to assign a material. If you have assigned the material in the modeling application, it will read it automatically. But if you didn't, now you have to apply it on the mesh. So first, let's do the meshing. I select the whole part, 
here we can try the uh, you can select the element type i will explain what are these elements and what are the differences this is basically a tetrahedral draw with four points and this is with 10 points the more points you have the more accuracy you, you get i go with 10 points and i can use this automatic element size to get the best option there is stuff the options are good for this simulation so i click ok we get our mesh here it how it looks and you see that when you have holes in your part you usually have some small elements that are not uh, very accurate but i'm going to talk about that in our next tutorials this one is just for setting up and running a simulation really quick but i can uh, now go to physical properties and now i have this solid here that i can assign the material on this list i click on edit and here it says the material is inherited from the prt file but I don't think I assigned the material in the modeling, but now I can do it. So I select aluminium, click OK. The rest are OK. And click close. Now we can continue with uh, loading and constraints. So I go back here by clicking activate simulation. The top row will change a little bit. So these uh, load and constraints are available now. I just want to apply a force or I can go with the bearing because I have circular shape here. And I want to have a bearing load. Bearing load is like a crushing load that you have on a pin that we talked about it before. So it's like you have a bearing with some radial load on it i select the vector that way and i go with 100 newton and now you can see it will automatically distribute the 100 newton like a bearing would and on the other side as well I want to fix the other end. Click on fix constraint and I will fix the whole body here. But so you can go with polygon face. Let me reset this. Yes. And click OK. Now all points on this end are fixed. Now let's see if we can solve here by clicking on the solve. So I ask you if you want how you want to report and all this stuff, but everything is okay by default. By clicking OK, this uh, automatic report generating will open and you can see the log while it's working. So it's in progress. On the background, it is trying to open yeah, this one, the Fortran, the real Fortran solver for uh, NASTRAN. The simulation is finished. It says if you want to review, I click no, but you could see the graph and I will show it in the next simulation that it shows that how it converges actually. We're gonna get into the more detail in the next tutorials. Simulation is completed, so I close everything. Simulation completed means that now there is something under the result. This is structural. If I click on it, I will see some results here. Under the structural, you have displacement. Here you can see this is exaggerated. Here by 10% of the model, I can go one to one. So you will see that it's not a big deflection. But if we go with 1%, you can see it better now. Then here you can see the stresses. 
we have a lot of stress here around this point which is around 0.68 megapascal we can see it here you can see nodal stresses you can see strains and other types of reports like uh, applied force and reaction which should be here on the fixed part